Good day! Welcome to this short tutorial on how to calibrate the ocular micrometer. Before you watch this tutorial, make sure you're already familiar with your microscope and its components, and you know how to set up color illumination first. In this tutorial, we will answer the following questions. We will first discuss what an ocular micrometer is. Then we will discuss why calibration is necessary and the logic behind it. Finally, we will talk about how it can be properly done. If a specimen is sufficiently large, we can always measure it using an ordinary ruler. However, when working with very small specimen, it is impractical to place a microscopic ruler next to them on the stage. This is why we have to use a tool called an ocular micrometer. An ocular micrometer is basically an embedded ruler in one of the eyepieces of your microscope. Let's go ahead and turn on the microscope, switch to the 10x objective lens, and start looking through both eyepieces. This is what the ocular micrometer looks like. I emphasize that this micrometer is not on the stage, there is nothing on the stage at this time, rather it is embedded inside one of the eyepieces, which by the way is why you need to practice getting comfortable with looking through both eyepieces as early on as possible. What I want to convince you of now is that these units, these ocular units, which we will refer to from now on as OUs, do not really provide us with any information regarding the physical dimensions of the specimen we're looking at, unless we calibrate the microscope. Let me show you what I mean. I am going to load a slide of an unidentified organism, like so. As you can see, the specimen is measuring one and two ocular units under the current magnification. We are currently using the 10x objective lens. Now I'm going to switch to a higher magnification lens. Let's say I'll switch to the 40x objective lens. And this is what we see this time. It is now measuring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight ocular units. Now naturally, we are looking at the same slide. The organism hasn't physically grown in size. The only thing that's changed is the objective lens. We are looking at the same specimen using different objective lenses. On the 10x, we recorded the length as being two ocular units, while on the 40x, the same specimen registered a length of eight ocular units. This means that the ocular measurement corresponds to different lengths on the stage depending on the objective that we're using. I'll say that again. The ocular measurement corresponds to different lengths depending on the objective that is being used. This is why it is necessary to calibrate the ocular micrometer. So we're going to have to figure out a way to convert our ocular micrometer recordings to absolute physical measurements with units. The trick that we use here is actually very simple. Here's the idea. If I have two lines, one with a known length and the other with an unknown length, by simply comparing the lines and their lengths, it is possible to calculate the unknown length. In this instance, for example, we merely have to make the observation that the length of the red line is three quarters, or about 75% of the length of the blue line. Now, knowing that the blue line has an entire length of 100 centimeters, or one meter, it is very easy to calculate that the red line has a length that is equivalent to three quarters of 100 centimeters, or 75 centimeters. We are going to apply the exact same logic when trying to calibrate the ocular micrometer. We load a special kind of slide onto the stage. This slide contains a factory-made ruler with a known length. This is called the stage micrometer. Stage micrometers can have different lengths. One millimeter and two millimeter ones are common. In this video, we will work with a stage micrometer that is one millimeter in length. So now we have a length that is known, the stage micrometer, and we have a length that we wish to obtain. Our unknown is the ocular micrometer. Just like the previous slide, by simply comparing the two lengths, we can arrive at the unknown. Now remember, and I repeat myself, the ocular micrometer is embedded inside the eyepiece, whereas the stage micrometer is on a slide that we have placed on the stage. Using the stage knobs, you can align these two nicely before beginning your calculations like so. Let's also be clear on our terminology. A stage unit, or an SU, is the separation between two major numbered lines on the stage micrometer. This is one SU, or a stage unit. Likewise, 
an OU or an ocular unit is going to be defined as the separation between two major and numbered lines on the ocular ruler. To avoid confusion, if needed, I will refer to these smaller divisions, these, as mini units. So we will have mini stage units and mini ocular units. That being said, we are now ready to write down everything that we know and everything that we can observe. Let's begin by writing down what we already know. The entire length of the stage micrometer, or the red ruler, is known to us. 10 stage units, or the entire length, is 1 millimeter. Because we are dealing with very small measurements, a millimeter is not really a convenient unit. Instead, we prefer to use microns. 1 millimeter is equal to 1000 microns. And this is the unit that we will use for the remainder of the calculations. Now, because 10 stage units are equal to 1000 microns, we conclude very simply that one stage unit, and I'm dividing both sides by 10, is equal to 100 microns. All of this follows from what we know about the stage micrometer. Very well. Now let's compare our known and unknown lengths. We observe that the entire length of the ocular micrometer, the black ruler, is lining up against 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 stage units. Let's write that down. 10 ocular units, or the entire length of the ocular micrometer, is lining up against 9.9 .9 stage units. Now we wrote previously here that one stage unit is equal to 100 microns. This means we can replace 9.9 .9 stage units with 990 microns. Let's rewrite 10 ocular units on the left side. Now if I divide both sides by 10, we arrive at the final conclusion that one ocular unit is equal to 99 microns. So now an ocular unit actually means something. We know what distance, what length one ocular unit corresponds to when you're using the 10x objective lens. If I load the slide that we used before, now we can say aha. So one and two ocular units and because each ocular unit is equal to 99 microns. So 2 times 99 microns equals 198 microns. And that's the actual length of this unidentified organism that we're looking at through the 10x objective lens. This final result, which is one ocular unit equals to 99 microns, is what you need to record in your lab notebook for future reference if you're going to be using the same microscope later on. Note also that each microscope has to be individually calibrated, and you need to calibrate the ocular micrometer for each of the objectives that you're going to use. Let's get some more practice. We'll calibrate the microscope using the 60x objective this time. Note how under this magnification our field of view is reduced, and the entire length of the stage micrometer is not visible to us, which by the way is completely fine. We can carry out our calculations just like before. I start by writing again what we know about the stage micrometer. The entire length of the stage micrometer, or the red ruler, is equal to one millimeter, which is 1,000 microns, which in turn means that one stage unit is equal to 100 microns. We now compare the lengths that we have available to us. We observe that the entire length of the ocular micrometer the entire length, which is 10 ocular units, is lining up against 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. That is to say, 1.7 stage units. Now, because we know that one stage unit is 100 microns, I can replace 1.7 with 170 microns. I will rewrite the left side of the equation, 10 ocular units. This means if I divide through by 10, I will have 
one ocular unit is equal to 17 microns. And let's not forget, this result is only valid when you're dealing with the 60x objective lens. If your microscope has other objective lenses, you need to repeat this procedure and calibrate for those objective lenses also. I hope everything we discussed made sense to you and will help you with your labs. Thanks for watching and good luck. Thank you.